Welcome back to another Kicking Tables. We are delighted to welcome back Jerry Ellsworth, the CEO of Tilt5. We spoke to Jerry about a year ago, actually, so we want to follow up with Jerry. Uh, Jerry, welcome back to the show. It's so good to see you again. Yeah, oh, gosh, thanks. Thanks for having me on. I know it's been you know, a, it's been a long talked, year. Was it right in the middle of the campaign? The uh, Kickstarter I th campaign? I think it was just before your Kickstarter campaign happened just before uh, as when we spoke to you it hadn't started yet but since then uh, i got the stats 300 and 3345 backers and you got 1.7 almost 1.8 million dollars on your kickstarter which is unbelievable so congratulations the you know the dream yeah, is be dream has become reality and so <laughs> we super proud <laughs> yeah we kind of want to know uh give us an update how is it going since last year since you got funded where is the project now since the whole world turned since upside the down the world turned yeah. upside down that's right <laughs> oh gosh a lot of stuff's happened so you know over the last year we've been working on getting into production which has been interesting and challenging so you know uh about last December, we were taking some trips over the factory and getting started to get going. And the um, we started hearing these rumors that we may not be able to go back to China because of some virus thing. And then faster than we could blink, wow, you know, yeah, we were blocked from traveling to China. The factory was shut down for three months, wow. and we're like, oh man, what do we do now? So you were and there so when when news started hitting. Well, we were going to Japan where our precision optical components okay. you know, are manufactured. We were just about ready to go to China, actually, Okay. Um, in the new year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's, that's when everything started hitting the fan. Um, well, yeah. We, we had it like, okay. Yeah. It's like, okay, now we can't go to China. Like, what do we do? And we ended up hiring a person. We trained them remotely. We've had them running all over China, going into factories and working on things. And we started building all the sub-assembly, you know, the components of the, the glasses. I don't know if yes. people haven't seen it before. These are the glasses. and There's little projectors up in here, and there's little lens assemblies, and there's little arm assemblies. And so we got underway doing that. And uh, that, that got started in the summertime. So around July, we started building all the sub-assemblies. And then right now, we're in kind of our pilot run phase where we're okay. putting small numbers of units together and testing them and and debugging the manufacturing process. Okay. Now we have a couple people working for us in China that are, you know, going into the factory and we have more eyes and ears. It's really interesting. I've never experienced anything like this on the manufacturing side. Like things that you could solve in, you know, five minutes standing on the factory floor now right. takes like three, four, five days because you're Yeah. It's all remote. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But overall, things are going really well on the manufacturing side. So, so you're you know, you're you're parts. working on the manufacturing the hardware. Are you also? I mean, at the same time, obviously working on the software for mm -hmm. for it. And I mean, how is how is the software uh, turning up? How's that going? Oh, it's really exciting. We've been sending out dev kits like crazy to awesome. third party developers, and we're starting to see the 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 fruits of that starting to come in. And we should have some pretty exciting announcements in the next three or so months uh, so do, you have a, do you have any games that you can sort of tease for us anything that's been already developed or sort of uh, close to, to in the works or well there's some that we announced on our kickstarter campaign so most of those are doing really well right now okay Fair. so you know tabletopia we're super excited about that you know tabletopia during the pandemic has exploded they oh, went yes. from huge yeah I think they had 800 games or so when we talked to them about this time last year. It's like gone up to like 1,500 games, and their user base is like exploded. It's just huge, and so we're excited. That means that you know, day one when people get their glasses, there's going to be thousands and thousands of people out there to play right. against. So, for those who don't understand what Tilt Five is, how does that work with Tabletopia? When you're using Tilt Five, what are you seeing? And how does that work with Tabletopia? Yeah, so, yeah, the Till 5 system is a pair of glasses. You just slip the glasses on, and then you fold open this game board, and then you can have holographic games just kind of spring out of your table that you can directly interact with. We have a magic wand that you can poke things, and it's got triggers and buttons, and you can move things around. And you can also track your hands and other objects, oh, wow. like playing cards and things like that. 
So we have all these different features in the in the headset. And how that works with Tabletopia, so Tabletopia has digitized, you know, everything from your kind of public domain games like poker and checkers and the simple things to right. super high-end Euro-style um, board games. Oh, yeah. They're all digitized. And they're well, all a lot done. of Kickstarters are using it now to put their game out even before the Kickstarter with demos. Yeah, yeah. And so all of these digitized objects are, are scanned in in 3D, and so now you can manipulate them on our game board as if they were real you know, game board pieces. So all your pawns and your cards and dice, yeah. stuff you can interact hmm. with them. And how it, how it interacts is, is really cool. So if you have your families around the table with you all wearing tilt five glasses, you're all peering into this kind of volumetric you know, holographic space, you know, playing with all these cards and stuff. But if your friends can't be in the same home with you, um, you can link your game board to somebody else and you can play over distance as well. So your friends can be moving these same, you know, 3D right. you know, dice and pawns and stuff around and, and playing the games as well. And then we have built in uh, voice chat so you can be talking to your friends and it really nice. feels like you're together. And if, if your friends don't have a T5 system yet, um, you can just play cross-play, so you can play on your tablet or your your okay. PC. Yeah, I was going to ask okay. you that. So, so you could be on Tabletopia with Tilt Five, and uh, someone could be playing on Tilt Five on their PC, and you can still play together. Yeah, uh, yeah. That is Super. that is awesome. That would for me that actually makes Tabletopia even better because I find when I'm trying to play a board game on Tabletopia, hmm. I struggle more. With, I'm, I, it's it's more about figuring out the controls than actually playing the game. And so I don't enjoy the game as much because <laughs> the controls sometimes actually, yeah. actually hitting a button and flipping your cards over when you're just trying to pick them up and yes. stuff like that gets really confusing. So having that that yeah. system of being able to physically and not and being able to them. see everything, like having to yeah. zoom in and see things close and just not having that, you know, table right in front of you is really uh, it's, it's detrimental yeah, it to really, it. you know, what's neat about our system is it takes things that would be difficult for someone, especially if they don't play video games, mm -hmm. you know, it makes yeah. it the interactions just like it was in the real world. So you want to pick the dice up. Yes. You know, you can just grab them with the end of your wand and you just, everyone knows how to poke something, right? Exactly. With a stick. You exactly. just poke the dice within a stick and pull the trigger and you pick them up and you twirl them around and you drop them. And, you know, instead of trying to futz around with a joystick or a touch screen, it's just far more intuitive. Yeah. Just don't poke. So that's just one just example of, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's one example of uh, one of these um, applications that's coming to our system. We have also a lot of um, puzzle and action games coming too, like pure video games. Oh, so nice. that's pretty cool too. So we've we've expanded the scope of what what you're going to see on our system. And and are those games included with the system? If somebody has already backed it, will they will they get these games with it? Yeah, yeah, quite a few of them. Some you'll have to pay for because you know third party developers. You know, doing this to put food on the table, but yeah. Um, yeah, we included a bunch, and we've already sent out Steam keys to a few of the games. Nice that are coming to our system, like uh, War Tile. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, so everyone got a free War Tile key, and they got to um, play it ahead of time, and that's going to be, you know, you know, holographic space once the glasses are available. That's a great Chuck's game to throw in there for sure. That's yeah. that's fun. I can so imagine pretty. seeing that in in three D. It'd be amazing. So can the Tilt 5 capabilities be added to like any game, or is it only specific ones that are developed for Tilt 5? No, it's just a plug-in that you can put into the game engine, okay. and you can take advantage of you know these features. A lot of games, you will port over very nicely, and some of them, probably not. Like, you know, if it's like a uh, first-person shooter, it's kind of... Kind of weird doing a first-person shooter looking yeah. straight down into your table, but it could <laughs> sure. work, right? But if it's like a uh, top-down, like action game, like a Diablo-style game or a yeah. Command and Conquer-style game, it just it's like a straight-over port. It's it's really yeah. easy. But could uh, can Tilt Five capabilities be added to an actual board game? Could could someone take a board game and and create a module? to use Tilt 5 to augment the real world game with holographics. That's an interesting thing to uh, think about. Yeah, you could imagine that uh, you could kind of flip the interactions on their head. So instead of having 
everything extremely virtual. It could only be like minor amounts of it being virtualized. So take a maybe a uh, an existing game that has a lot of physical pieces and cards and stuff like that, and use Tilt Five. Gloomhaven. Just... Have Gloomhaven, and you <laughs> you know, Tilt Five. You could actually see the three dimensional dungeon you're in. And each of the enemies could be holograms that you're fighting. Like you would actually see them on, and as you move them on the board, the hologram moves with it. You know, I could see like that would be incredible. It, it, it oh would, yeah, it would bring the game to life. Well, like you can think of Warhammer type of um, yeah uh, games where you know you still have all your physical pieces, but you just have like this beautiful map where right. the um, the RPG is playing out and. Um, or it could be something, you know, that just makes gaming easier. So I was just thinking, you know, it'd be be great to have, like, tutorials, mm. you know, done on oh, the, yeah. the T5 system. So you're actually playing with the cards and the real pieces, but it's walking you through, you know, how to play and, and helps you from doing the wrong move or gives you hints. And because everyone that's wearing these glasses gets their own private view into the 3D space, oh, right. it's, it's not revealing any information to your your friends so you know you can be getting hints and and using it to look up strategies and different things that you play alongside the existing game yeah i could i could see this working even for a, a tabletop rpg mm -hmm. you know yeah. so that instead of having a map on the table the dm could essentially create terrain and so this is where you are so now you're physically seeing where you are in this in this and you're still playing a tabletop rpg that would be absolutely fantastic yeah, we're going to be working with uh, Bradley Shepard of Battle Map Studio. So oh, it's a nice. tool for creating um, maps. Nice. Okay, very it doesn't cool. have it doesn't do anything but create maps. But yeah. You can create this map and then and you then know, play in it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's that's all you would need really for a, a, a tabletop RPG is just create the map of where your characters are, and it's it's more vir virtual instead of just imagining it. You know, you see a map on a table with hexes. Put it in three D. Make it make it virtual. That would be really cool. Yeah, and then you just save the state of where you are. Like, if you can't finish your campaign, just save it, come back later, and just flip a switch, and it comes right there back. It is. Right, right okay. back, no cleaning up, no exactly. putting it away. Put a marker yeah. where your characters are. Yeah, it'd be awesome. That's, that's yeah. awesome. Um, as you're developing this, do you have any uh, memorable play sessions that you can share with us? Well, you know, it's I think the ones that are extremely memorable to me is, like, how we dealt with, showing people how to use the system during covid mm -hmm. yeah. yeah right so you know we i don't know if you guys saw but we raised some money so we raised some venture capital to go alongside the kickstarter money yeah, and that all happened that. during yeah that's super exciting it allows us to get more games and more content for the yeah. system and do a lot more but you know we had to be able to show off you know these glasses to investors and and people doing due diligence on us and stuff and yeah. So we'd have to, we'd all evacuated our office. And so the office like in shambles, like tipped over chairs and boxes oh, no. and stuff. <laughs> a true, so, true apocalypse style evacuation. It really, it literally looked like that. I'd, I'd look at the security camera from time to time to make sure nothing bad happened office. And it, it just looked like someone had already, uh, you know, uh, looted the place. But um, yeah, we, we'd, we'd set up this like scenario where we'd have like one of the glass office rooms you know, all sanitized and cleaned up and people would come through and we'd shuffle them in there and be like, okay, the glasses are sitting in there, like hit the button and then just slip the glasses on. And I'm talking through a glass window and, and now grab the wand and just like <laughs> poke at the table. It was, it was very odd. Wow. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think all the play sessions this year have been very odd because of not being able to like have strangers come and like sit across the table from us. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> what is the um i know with COVID, it's obviously changed thing but do you do you have a target date for when you're hoping this is all done and in the hands of backers yeah we were supposed to be done by the end of the summer and obviously we're past that now yeah. by a couple months um i think it's gonna be a few more months okay. like we're reluctant to uh, give an exact date because mm -hmm. you know just like i said you do you you do something in the factory, something goes wrong, and then it takes like five days to fix it. Yeah. And we're still going through that cycle right now of like how many more of those kind of hiccups are we going to have? 
Yeah, it's a very delicate. I mean, this is this is hardware and software, and it's you know it's it's more than just creating a board game. You know, it's there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on. I'm sure it's a lot more difficult to develop something like this, especially in these times. And um, also, everyone else has slowed down quite a bit too. So all mm. our third party content has to be ready as well. Like yeah. we can't even if we could ship them today. Like. Until we have enough of the third-party content there, people wouldn't be happy receiving a the hunk of plastic. The full experience needs to be ready to go. Yeah. Yeah, so there's still a little bit in front of us. Can uh, can units still be pre-ordered now? If someone went to Tilt 5, can you pre-order now? Like, you don't have to wait for it to finally launch? Yeah, that's it's kind of an interesting dilemma we're in right now. We left the pre-sale button turned on the Kickstarter campaign, and you know, as soon as COVID hit, there was like, this huge uptick in pre-sales. And so now we're... We're looking at, you know, we have to get the Kickstarter units out, and then we have all the pre-sales that we have to get out. Mm. And so it's kind of a first-come, first-serve, and we're trying to figure out, like, you know, when does all of the the Kickstarter and pre-sales end, and when do we go into, like, a more traditional sales cycle? And it's yeah, going to take us a while to catch up. So if you want to get it now, you can go, you know, get into the queue and and get in, awesome. in line. Awesome. It sounds amazing. I mean, we were we were – so fascinated when we spoke to you last year <clears throat> it's uh it's awesome to hear how things are going that sounds like it's going well it's slower than you'd like obviously but it's going well uh jerry it's been such a pleasure to speak to you again and, and i'm so excited uh that this is this is becoming reality for you and i can't wait to see it i i am excited it sounds so amazing and the possibilities are endless i uh and i and i hope it uh i hope it's a huge success for you Jerry, thank you so much for uh, joining us again. Yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure. Well, I want to sincerely thank everyone for um, stopping by and, and listening to us today. And uh, I encourage you to go to tilt5.com and uh, check out uh, what we're doing over there with augmented reality. And be sure to click and subscribe and uh, join everyone over at OMG Nexus.